Okay, we'll bring this meeting to order. It's a little past 10 34. Um, for this, uh, I guess, this meeting of the 20th of December. Next is uh, our uh, video recording uh, statement. Board members, staff, guests, and members of the public are reminded that the full authority board uh, meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the authority's website along with the official written minutes. As such, comments and opinions expressed may be published, and any comments expressed by individual board members, guests, and the general public are their own and do not re represent the opinions or comments of the full authority and Kettle Creek uh, Conservation Authority Board of Directors. The recorded video of the full authority meeting is not considered the official record of the meeting. The official record of the full authority meeting shall consist solely of the minutes approved by the full authority. Now, uh, uh, are there any uh, declarations of your interest? Seeing none, uh, we'll uh, go to the hearing. So I have a motion that the board of directors sit as a hearing board in respect of the application of section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Second. Baron? Seconder? Todd? All in favor? Motion carries. I'll ask a uh, uh, recorder to uh, please uh, give roll call, please. Lori Baldwin Sands. Present. Frank Bird. Present. Jim Herbert. Present. Grant Jones. Present. Sharon McMillan. Present. Jerry Pribble. Present. Todd Noble. Present. Sam Perso. Present. John Wilson. Present. Chair, all members are present. Thank you. <laughs> This hearing under Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act in respect to an application by Ron Kingswood for permission to remove a cottage and construct a, a modular home on uh, 3289 Old Dexter Line in the Miss Valley Central. The province of Ontario has made regulations under Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act, which require the permission of the authority for development within uh, any regulated, uh, uh, any regulated, an, an area regulated by the authority in order to ensure that no adverse effects of controlled flooding, erosion, dynamic beaches, or pop, uh, pollution or conservation of land, or to prevent alteration to a shoreline of or water course or interference with the wetland. Staff reviewed this uh, proposed uh, work and a copy of the staff report was given to the applicant. In accordance with section 2.2 of the conservation the Cal Creek Conservation Authority Section 28 Hearing Procedures Skyline, the regulations of approval officer deems the application for development of the 3289 Old Extra Line in this value center of the warrants a review by the authority for technical policy or information purposes. In holding this hearing, the authority is to de uh, determine whether or not to permit this uh, permit, uh we know you're not a, a permit is issued. In doing so, we can only consider the application in the form that is uh, before us. The staff reports such evidence as may be given and suspicions to be made on behalf of the applicant. Proceedings will be conducted according to the Statutory Powers Procedure Act. Under Section 5 of the Canadian Evidence Act, a witness may refuse to answer any question on the ground that the answer may tend to incriminate the, uh, the person or may tend to establish his or her liability to a civil proceeding at the instance of a crown or any other person. Procedure is general in general shall be informal without the evidence before it being given under oath or affirmation. As the hearing proceeds, the proceed, uh, procedures list and the hearing procedure summary provided by may be relaxed or abbreviated for efficiencies. The authority may ask questions of witnesses for clarification at any time. If the applicant has any questions to ask the hearing board or of the authority representative, may this director uh, direct it through the chair of the board. I'll now ask for any declaration of interest around the table. 
Seeing none, I'll now ask uh, staff to present the report. <laughs> Uh, so, as stated, we're here today uh, to review an application for 2289 Old Dexter Line. Uh, present with us today is Mr. Ron Kingwood, the landowner and the applicant um, for the application. The application is to demolish an existing dwelling and accessory buildings that are currently at risk of being destroyed by erosion from Lake Erie. Uh, and construct a new dwelling and accessory building with further improvement hazard. And just a quick summary of the stats what's existing on the property is just over a 1,500 square foot two bedroom dwelling, uh, 1,300 and change square foot accessory building that's currently being used as a garage in the art studio. And then there's a, a barn existing, 1,800 square foot barn that are currently approximately 60 feet or 18 meters from the barn. I don't like your short eye. What the proposal is asking is to demolish these structures and construct an 1800 square foot two bedroom dwelling and a 936 square foot accessory building to be used, continue to use as an art studio, uh, where the setback will be put personally in the hazard of probably 415 feet. Uh, this is uh, on the left of the screen. These are some mapping. Uh, just for reference, the black lines are the watershed boundary between Kettle Creek and Cat Bay. So the entire property is in the Kettle Creek watershed. The red line represents the regulation limit where the lands that are affected by the regulation of the Conservation Forest Act. The orange patching across the, the southern portion of the shoreline, that's the, that's the erosion hazard limit for the shoreline, the predicted 100 year hazard limit. And then as you can see, the location of the street. The screen to the right is kind of a blow up that it's a 2020 aerial photograph. That shows the existing structures in relation to the shoreline and the overall general existing conditions. Here's a photograph of the painting on uh, November 29th, 2023, that just shows in relation where the current top of bank is today in relation to those structures. The dwelling itself on the left of the screen or the right of the screen is approximately 18 meters. What Mr. Kingswood is requesting to, to apply for is to construct a, a new dwelling and replacement of the existing dwelling further up in the north west corner of the property, the maximum limit he can under zoning and setbacks from the road, uh, and construct an accessory building to continue as a part of studio use. The, the, the drawings are including your advanced package, but one thing I wanted to highlight is the buildings will be designed to be readily movable in the future. So an event the erosion, if, if it's missable at the event, the erosion reaches the building, it can be lifted off and appear to be moved easily away. He's also submitted an engineer's structural opinion letter to support the design of the building, uh, mitigating risk for it in the future. So when, when we look at the, the concern that we're here today and bring before the board is that the intent of the property falls within the erosion hazard limit along the way here at Shoreline. So based on the physical technical guide, the figure on the right-hand side of the screen shows how we determine that under your erosion hazard limits. So we start with a stable slope allowance, uh, and that's based on an absence of shoreline erosion. That area of the slope is considered unstable in absence of engineering, or any home located in that stable slope could be subject to imminent risk. And then we apply the average annual recession rate over 100 years measured from that stable slope. The reason why I'm clarifying that is when I talk about 50 year protection or 60 year protection, it's measured from that stable slope. So when we look at the aerial photograph here, we can see the existing dwelling, the stable slope line, and then what I did is I projected 10 year erosion hazard as we go across. So what it's illustrating here is that the new dwelling and the accessory building is within a 40 year erosion protection based on the provincial standard or the definition. So uh, the existing dwelling is in the same slope allowance. He's proposing to build a new one further away from the hazard, which would have about a 40 year uh, protection based on the provincial standard or definition. So this is an illustration of how, so as you can see, the 100-year regulation has is north of the subject property outside of ownership. Okay. 
able to change the file to it from there. Okay. So when, when it sets in the application under the regulations of the Conservation Authority or that, the authority may grant permission for development in or on the area described in the regulation, if in its opinion, the control of flooding, erosion, dynamic beaches, pollution, or the conservation of the land will not be affected by the development. This is what we refer to as five tests of the regulation. With regard to this application, we're looking at the test for erosion. There are no flooding risks or, or dynamic beach, so we're solely looking at the impact to erosion. The other guide in the document is the provincial policy statement and technical guidance. The first and primary premise of provincial natural hazard policy is to direct development away from hazards. So we want to see new development occurring outside of hazardous lands where there's an unacceptable risk to public health or, or, or safety or property damage and not to create new or aggravated existing hazards.
we can pick it up and move somewhere with it. So that that weighs heavily in my mind. It's nice digging foundations. I mean, he's got to put a septic in, and, and if he's helping with this house, he loses the money because he put a septic in. He's got to meet all the requirements. But the fact it's not a permanent residence, like it's stuck in the ground, you come in there with a, whatever you move with and move it. So, and you're projecting 40, 50 years down the road. That's projections. I mean, uh, we project everything, which is true, but it may never happen. But anyway, the fact it's not permanent, he can put a house on there and pick it, whatever, how you move houses, he can move it. That's key in my mind uh, that it's on his property. So if he meets all the other requirements, the fact it's not permanent is key in my mind. So anyway, thank you. So thank you for that, Jim. That was one um, comment that we worked through on the advice that he was going to move this to an application. We encouraged him to look at that. That's really one of the strongest requirements in the technical guide that permission is granted, that that house would readily move so any future landowners in similar situation. Yeah, you know, it's you know, today. So thank you for that comment. Okay. Great. Um, so However, whatever decision we make, how long can he stay in his house? Is it is it habitable today? Yeah, we can. It, it is habitable. Yes. But so the 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 last one in management plan looked at that and said it, it's hard to do all the factors that combine to help slow failure occurs on the Lake Erie shoreline. It's hard to put a time frame to it. So how long before the house is at risk? We don't know for sure. What they do identify is that with how many career shoreline erodes and these superficial large failures that happen, the next failure could take up to 10 meters. Yep. And anything within 10 meters is considered imminent danger of going in. Right. Um, we've seen some examples in the last few years where it's been greater than 10 meters. Yeah. So this 18 meters could go another five years, it could go this way. We, yeah. we don't we don't know for sure. It's hard to I have personal experience with this down. Towards Windsor, where all of a sudden 12 meters in blocks. Okay. Any other questions? Board message? Go ahead, Sam. Is this being used as a principal place of residence? Yes. Is it the intent? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. If, if I may, I think in the report, uh, Mr. Kingsbury put a covering letter where I believe you purchased property in 93. Yes, I'm there for three yeah. years. Any other questions around the table? See any further questions? Uh, I'll ask that. Good. Uh, Mr. Kingsley, any uh, further comments from yourself? I don't think so. I think uh, what um, um, Joe uh, Gordon has stated that uh, pretty obviously. The the, uh, the timeline, the, the size of the property. Um, I wish I owned more property to the north, but that's the reality. I don't, and uh, it's permanent residence for us. So, um, and if you know, I really don't want to move it, but I don't really have a choice. And it was built in 1934, so it's a 90 year old cottage. Um, structurally, I talked to a few people. Uh, movers and they just said impossible and uh, and the longer you wait uh they're not even going to touch it because it, it might be five meters from the cliff so um um the Kettle creek wanted a, a engineer's report so we got that and uh, he concurred with with the uh, 90 year cottage <laughs> cottage is fine if, if, if there was no erosion we'd still be i mean we we are now but i mean we wouldn't have any desire to to move them so that's thank you. Thank you. Any questions of board members of that pitch? Yep, go to, to the chair. Uh, thank you for this. It's a tough decision for everybody, and we're all looking at safety for everybody. Uh, has there been ever any thought of trying to stop the erosion? I mean, some places you see those big baskets of stone and, and bring them across. And is that any possibility or way out of your realm of expense or whoever would do that? There is a, a joke could probably talk a bit more about that, but at one point we couldn't do, we couldn't put a sandbag at the base of our cliff. And, um, and that was 20 years ago ish. And, uh, but I don't think on, on that stretch between Port Bruce and Port Stanley, where we live, you can't save one particular lot. 
Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the erosion happens uh, on the east side. It just digs out our neighbors if that was the case. And it would be extremely expensive. I mean, if, there, if it wasn't a, a way to do it, I think we'd probably look into yeah. it. But if I could add to that, Jim, through Mr. Chair, is you know, the last technical uh, shoreline management plan that was done identified that hardening the shoreline on, on high bluffs with secondary rates of erosion. One, very costly, low benefit because of the severe rates of erosion that would continue mm -hmm. to happen on both sides. As well, what's happening right now is because of the literal, the literal cells. So as those soils erode, they go down drift. So they go to the uh, east of us. And that, by blocking that sediment transport creates an environmental impact on Long Point and other issues downstairs. So it is recommended against in our technical guides against hardening uh, high bluff shorelines. Uh, through the chair, sure. to Joel, what, what typically is the season for erosion? Is it year round or all of a sudden in the spring because of high rains? Is that I think there's a higher risk in the spring, uh, obviously, with the snow melt and the saturated. Erosion can happen anytime because there are several factors that contribute to it with surface water, groundwater mm -hmm. seepage, uh, soil type, how steep the slope is. The primary force that's making the, the erosion so active in this area is the wave energy at the toe, washing away the base of the slope, and then it spits rates. Um, there is a greater concern now with climate change, and Lake Erie is no longer freezing over. So what, what in the wintertime, the shoreline used to get relief from that wave energy when the lake was frozen. Now, with not having the lake frozen to the degree it has in the past, that's additional three, four months of the season that now that we're continuing wave action on the slope. So it, it, there's potential that the, the erosion rates could exacerbate in the future. Yeah, thanks. Because Thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. um, any other questions? Uh, I don't know if this is an okay question, but has consideration been given to what the condition, what further conditions might be and whether they would be agreeable to both to both parties here. I'm not sure I understand the question. Are there additional conditions that could be imposed that would satisfy the uh, interest of the uh, uh, of authority? So at the same time, allowing uh, allowing the current construction subject to change later. Right. Uh, in, in the staff report, staff, if the board was going to consider showing the permit, we did identify two kitchens, the, the covenant restriction safe harmless, and then wanting to ensure that the building goes off. Um, yeah. It is within your board's right in closed session to deliberate. And, and are there other noticeable ones that would be more of a technical nature that might, that might require a, an evaluation in 10, 15 years and perhaps additional cost? Yeah, so we've, through the application process, you know, uh, a lot of the technical aspects, we've worked through the application. I think Ron will tell you he's had a few uh, revisions to his drawings to try and meet some technical requirements that staff are asking based on the guidelines. So the technical aspects, I don't think there's anything further that staff can think of in terms of future years. I think that may be a question relative to the regulation. I'm not sure if we have the authority to put something in that the landowner would have to come back to us in 30 year time frame. But well, well, we do. <laughs> well, but, but still there's there's an interest that, that your successors uh, would, would 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 have in right. even if it's even if it's not something we could impose on a current owner, perhaps that's something that would be subject to an agreement. I, right. I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. Jen, Sorry to the chair, Ms. Kingsbury. And just so I'm clear in my mind, if you're allowed to put build new ones, are you ripping the old one down? Is that yes? Is that just going to sit there and fall in the lake? Oh, that's our intent: is to um, remove some of the uh, items of the house for the new place, and then um, destroy the uh, old house, okay. so sell the windows, and so what we can, and then remove it. So, so a follow-up question, Mr. Chair. Okay. So when you're going to do the septic, the septic, you have to have a tank, uh, yeah. nine rows, 45 feet long, I believe, nine of them. You have room for all that there, and that would be towards the, the lake area? Is yeah, that it, would, it would probably be toward the uh, east. So we have where the, uh, where the studio and the, the, uh, yeah. the highway right now. I think that's probably yeah. what... Yeah, because you want to do it on kind of an angle so you're not straight out. Yeah, I, I just... Well, one of the other solutions that's connected to 
for them to us. We're showing you the north of the building. So that would be a requirement in our technical guides. It can't go south of the building. Um, the reason for that is why they do that is a building official doesn't have authority to do the dwelling at risk and unhittable until the, the, the dwelling is at risk. So we want to see that the septic system is functional for the life of the building and that the building gets at risk for the septic system. In the front of the building. So it has to be landward of the building. And some preliminary drawings that I just kind of really show the septic. Because you can put that in 20 years. Yeah, because typically, from what I understand in, in the country, when I live in the country, we put a septic in the front yard because you might want to put a pool in the backyard. You put a septic in your backyard, you no longer put the pool in. Anyway, so so you have a lot of innovation here and uh, some good thoughts gone into it. So thank so you. Yeah, the contingency area allowance on the septic pit with the tank. Yeah, there, there's sufficient room for this is the structure set back in the front yard, but they do a lot of Okay. So it's 450 feet, I believe, 50 rows. Nine rows, 50 feet. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to just find a question for Joe. Uh, this may be not exactly appropriate to this particular piece of property, but while we're, we're considering this, are there any other properties in this general vicinity that in the future be affected in the same way? There, there are additional houses along uh, deck and line. And maybe Elizabeth, I could have you on the slide to the, the regulation mapping that shows the greater stretch. I believe Mr. Kingwood's Kingwood property on the Dexter Lane is one of the last that has any opportunity to further in the work of the property. So we'll see. Uh, that one you've shown might, might be helpful. It's right there. I just got down there right now. This, with, even with relocation, our primary concern is that any relocation of structures or new development should not be placed back within this stable slope allowance because that's considered a risk. So, even if there's a, in other scenarios, we had if there was relocation of the existing building, the primary thing is we wanted a stable slope line and then we get into the guideline and how much broken years it has for protection. As we look down the western line, you can see Dexter line papers and goes down toward the shoreline. All of the other homes on the Dexter line are within the stable slope allowance and they have no room to move the building or redevelop or anything, keep it out of the stable slope line. So we did have preliminary discussions with Ron where from the review of that stretch, this is the only property that has additional erosion on protection where all of those other homes are, are in that stable slope line. Any further questions from the board members? Ron, do you have any further last comments? No, I don't, sir. Okay. And I have one more time from board members. Any more questions? I'm out of If not, I'm going to read a motion to go into closed session. So move. Move. Okay. Frank seconds. All beer. And Elizabeth, if you can, you can leave it on the last slide of the presentation for your deliberation. I've got all three of the options that we're presenting staff before us to you as part of your discussions. Okay. So this is the chair. Yeah, go ahead. Could we just review the options, please, for me? Before we go there. So the options look at the ability to deny the application, okay. permit the application, okay. permit the application with condition. Okay, so. So if, if the board cannot accept the engineer's letter and we're relying on the test for redevelopment, then you you may consider denying the application that have an effect on the control room if it doesn't meet the redevelopment of the technical guide. If you want to consider granting the permission, you would be accepting the engineering inspection letter as justification to consider those alternate requirements and issuing a permit based on that. And then if you are going to consider the permit, you have the ability to add recommendations and staff are recommending that you do. You have at least two recommendations over there. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So close out. Right? And two, all existing buildings or structures and auxiliary items upon the property located within the slip, uh, stable slope based on the three to one sta uh, stable slope ratio of the abutting shoreline buff uh, be removed from the property from the two documents of the new ground.
Vamos. So I need a motion to adjourn the tribunal. Frank, Secretary Todd, Mayor, one, two. She's carried. Okay. You want to ratify the decision? Let's let's reach. Ratify the decision on the front. I'm just okay, we're back to uh, open session. Uh, we will have a session. Sorry. We're in open session. Yeah. Okay. We're in yeah. yeah. for a few minutes. So, yeah. Okay. So we're back to uh, our normal uh, regular meeting uh, where we're recording. So uh, we've already done the Introductions, uh, we're able to done. So we're down to minutes. So the November 15th, full authority meeting. Any errors or omissions? So full authority meeting. Moved. Seconder. Todd. All in favor. Motion carries. Go down to matters rise, uh, rising. And first is a media report. Hi, good morning. Yeah. So, um, just so you know, Elizabeth, your camera's off, but uh, in the boardroom. But just to go over the media report, I wanted to share a little status update of the 2023 um, socials. So great growth and followers, and our website saw over 135,000 page views um, and 42,000 visitors in 2023. Um, if you want to know the next slide. I just wanted to show just um, how people are connecting with us. These are followers out of Tag Lake Whitaker or Dalewood and are kind of sharing some of the either work that we're doing, um, like staff are doing, or um, how they're using our parks recreationally. That third video is a how-to paddleboard at Lake Whitaker. So I thought it was kind of a neat um, connection there. And if you just want to go to the final slide. I uh, just wanted to highlight some shared uh, pictures on social media that uh, folks have tagged us in, whether it's kayaking the reservoir, hiking our trails, or attending an event, event at Dan Patterson. Uh, there's some great um, shares going on. So that kind of concludes the 2023 um, media report. Thanks, Marianne. Any questions? Not seeing anything. So we on to the next report, uh, project tracking. So a, a couple of things, Chair, to highlight. Um, the spring 2024 season thought uh, order was submitted to the nurseries. Uh, we're plant, we had placements of rocks out at Deer Ridge, the St. Thomas Elgin Children's Water, Water Festival, that organizing community is getting up and running. And we've posted our summer staff uh, jobs as well as the crew lead. Any questions for Elizabeth on the board? Good work. Now we'll move down to watershed conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a quick report today. Uh, Lake Erie water levels are approaching um, seasonal low, um, and they're actually approaching um, lot, like uh, similar to last year water level. And if uh, conditions continue uh, in the dry, uh, then they may even approach uh, the long-term um, average, which would be interesting. Um, and we've been working on snow surveys and collecting data for flood forecasting and warning for this season. Thank you, Jen. Any questions for Jen? Not seeing any. So we'll move down to item B, a portion a portion of vote reminder. I just uh, wanted to remind board members the budget and levy apportionment was circulated out to your member municipalities. Each of the board members were CC'd in that correspondence, uh, and it provided a notice that our levy apportionment vote will happen on January seventeenth. Uh, to date, no comments or concerns have been identified by any 
with the member municipalities. And a reminder as well that that vote will be there's no proxy votes about uh, for the for the levy of vote. So you should be here in person or online to, to conduct that vote. The final reminder of before we get to the new year is that the elections of officers will happen at the GM meeting as well. Um, chair and vice chair can serve no, no more than two terms and successors must be from a different uh, municipality. So just some reminders to think about as we head into the new year. Questions, uh, questions on that? Then we'll move down to the correspondence. We have a couple items. Uh, first, on uh, Prince Edward County, any comments from your perspective on that? Actually, Chair, before we move that, could I have a motion Thank to you. receive matters arising? A Jim, seconder, John, all in favor? Motion carries. Now we go to the correspondence. First item from Prince Edward County. Uh, any comments from your side? No. We want to support that resolution. Uh, entirely. That would trigger to go on there. That's one of the right? County. Prince Edward. Oh, the county? Yeah. What does staff say, Grant? Um, uh, no real comment. I mean, we're very lucky in our our watershed um, simply because our drinking water comes from the from the lake it wouldn't be as affected by some of the things that um, Prince Edward County is expressing concerns about if members wanted uh, more of a, an opinion of where our region lies I can reach out to the Lake Erie region and provide a, a more comprehensive report in the future Otherwise, I just put it on for, for your for your knowledge. Um, most of the correspondence was included for, for your knowledge. There was a, a couple of pieces of communications from the minister as well. Um, one was granting our extension um, for the apportionment portioning agreement. Uh, the other one uh, was notification that the minister's fees are being uh, frozen as well. Again, that doesn't affect any of the fees that you've set uh, this year. It's solely applied to uh, the planning and regulations fees associated with the uh, building. Okay. There's one last item uh, from Tom Bruce. Uh, is, uh, as trailer of the Lake Whitaker, um, you've seen my response to his uh, concerns. Uh, if anybody wants to bring that forward, into new business, that's fine. If not, we will just receive this information. We could, to the chair, we probably could refer that back to KC staff and ask their opinions on it, or is that not necessary? Either? Staff, Mr. Mr. Chair, yeah. yeah. I read what you said. We, we've we provided a staff, a so that's fine. You, I you, believe a comprehensive. You okay, that's fine. Just move that side. All right. Um, so, motion to receive and file correspondence. Chair and Todd. All in favor? Motion carries. Move down to uh, new business. Uh, first items uh, year end of reserve report. So, as forwarded out in the advanced package, staff do expect a year end surplus. I'm, I'm hoping of around uh, $40,000. Um, that's mainly due to employment and funding grant success, higher interest rates that were not budgeted for, and really a large chunk of that is uh, for the inability to fill all the seasonal staff positions that we had available in the campgrounds. They simply weren't full, filled this season, which resulted in a cost savings. The full budgeted drawdown of reserves was 179,000. I don't expect to have to make that drawdown on reserves, which is good. Uh, based on some of the budgeting that you've been a part of for 2024 and beyond. Um, mainly, this is because the interest revenue was able to cover off some of those unexpected dam expenditures that we ran into this year. And again, revenue from the campground will help reduce uh, reserve transfers that were anticipated for the floodplain mapping, uh, which again will in turn mean we have a larger pot of money moving forward to leverage uh, provincial and federal funding uh, for that. So, 
Overall, um, again, in the advanced report, you saw the year start uh, balances for the various reserves and what was budgeted for. I anticipate minimal transfers from reserves for the water managed from the water management. Again, we budgeted about sixty-five thousand from that, which would almost decimate that reserve. I don't expect to make that full. Um, transfer, which is good news because we can continue to leverage those funds. Uh, stewardship will be minimal, if any, and the watershed rehabilitation reserve, that's mainly our tree planting reserve. Uh, again, the uh, staff went out and found as much money as they could, uh, and so the expected drawdown on reserve from that will just be enough to balance that department, and it'll probably be in and around the $10,000 to $17,000 range based on my crystal balling at this point. So overall good news, uh, both for this budget year and uh, future years in terms of uh, protecting those reserves. Any questions for Elizabeth? A little bit of good news. Great, Jared. And when, um, in the last report of the financial one, I think there was a stage of 76,000 on summit, right? So there will be the words that there was that we had nothing in operating reserves and in the capital, it was 76,000. Is that right? Uh, I think the numbers are a little a little off. So these are the operating reserves that I'm talking about right now. Um, and then the capital reserves, I have to check, Jerry, to get to the, the right number, but it's, it's around 100. 200,000 in the capital reserves, but that's um, earmarked for our capital infrastructure renewal. But I can get you those exact reserve numbers if you want. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Matt, will uh, a recommendation that transfers uh, to and from reserves be conducted? as outlined in the 2023 approved budget and the 2023 year-end reserve report removal sector. So moved. Sam, seconder, Jerry, all in favor? Well, I'm curious. Next report, uh, Conservation Authorities Act update. So two uh, brief updates relative to the Conservation Authorities Act update. One is the cost apportioning agreement. So you saw in the correspondence, we did ask for an extension to have our cost apportioning agreements done by December 31st. And pleased to say that all seven member municipalities passed resolutions affirming the execution of those agreements. Um, five, five agreements have now been signed and executed by the officials. So those are posted uh, on our website as per regulation. The other two are forthcoming and I will post immediately as we have them. So uh, at the end of this meeting, I will provide notice to all the member municipalities that we've um, unanimously supported uh, that agreement that will be communicated to the ministry as well that we met the deadline for no longer require that extension. And then uh, all those agreements will be posted up on the website. The other one is the programs and services inventory. This inventory was approved in February of 2022. And again, it was that main uh, process in terms of categorizing our programs and services into category one, category two, category three. Um, it was updated in June of that same year, and it has been basically used to develop those cost apportioning agreements and decipher uh, which programs we needed to have those agreements in place for. We're required to file a final version again by January 31st, uh, 2024. Um, there's just basically minor housekeeping edits that we uh, needed to do to reflect the completion of the cost apportioning agreement. Staff have undertaken those. Um, we've kept the financial information included in the inventory based on the 2016 to 2020. 20 years, that's what we originally used in 2022. I'm not proposing to update these because we will continue to have this categorization in our budgets moving forward. And if people are interested in that breakdown, they would simply refer uh, to the budget breakdown. So this is just advising you that um, we finalized that programs and services inventory and the same thing, it will be uh, posted and circulated uh, as per the regulation. So the motion is simply that staff um, report on the Conservation Authorities Act update be received and further that the inventory and the cost apportioning agreements be circulated and posted as required. 
Any questions for me? So, uh, recommendations before you, uh, any mover and second, please. Glory and Todd. All in favor? Motion carries. Next report uh, regarding the city's balanced water pollution control plan and wastewater management master plan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I can present this. Uh, in your advanced package, we provided draft comment letters uh, on the environmental assessment that's being done by the city. Uh, a quick, quick summary of what the assessment is, they're assessing the current capacity of the wastewater treatment plant for future 25-year uh, prediction horizons. Early in that process, they identified the plant has some capacity restrictions, especially dealing with the new um, Volkswagen development in the North End. So part of the recommendations that came out of the early stages was to look at constructing a new wastewater treatment facility in the North End of the city. As part of that process, they've identified eight potential candidate sites uh, that are being looked at as potential considerations for the new plant in the North End. Um, as you can see on the slide and notice in their publications, the early stages have identified sites three, four, and five as the highest ranking for the potential. In our advanced letter, we provided comments relative to our regulatory jurisdiction on these sites. Uh, I think from the regulation standpoint, we'd agree three, four, and five are the most suitable sites with the less impact on regulations. But a lot of these sites impact us as a landowner. So there are a few sites that do express concerns as a landowner, specifically site number three, as you can see on the map, that's a farm field that's immediately adjacent to the Dalewood campground. So early in the process, we are identifying that that site is a concern from us as a landowner. Uh, so as we move through the EA process, depending on what comes to the top is the best suitable site, we may be forced to be providing comments, one as a regulatory agency and one as a land. So at this stage, We've gone through our preliminary assessment based on the information we have right now. From a reg's perspective, we support three, four, and five. But from a landowner perspective, we have concerns that we'd like to work through if, if three does continue to be a consideration with its impacts on the campground. So um, we would like to get the comments submitted. We thought we'd bring them for, for your aware of what the concerns of staff are when we look at it. And as I mentioned, the draft letter it wasn't the advanced package, and we're looking for today to support to submit those comments as presented. Uh, included in the letter, we did our own kind of rating chart where we went through each of the eight sites. As I mentioned, uh, four and five would be ideal from a landowner and a regulatory perspective. So that's what we're presenting to. Uh, the EA consultants in the city that are, from our regulatory perspective, four and five to be the, the best uh, suited sites based on our mandate. Good. Thanks, Joe. Any questions for Joe? I have no questions. Oh, we go back to the map. Thank you. Well, that would be as well. So, any questions? I guess I can see why you're concerned about coming through. It's uh, not sure exactly how the plan will be constructed, but I'm sure there's some orders that will come from the plan that could affect the campgrounds. And then I would just know this is the first stage of the EA process, so we didn't want to get too uh, excited about things until we know as it progresses through, but we wanted to get those comments in there so they're aware we do have concerns with three. Okay, there's no further questions. Resolution uh, that comments of the master plan for the city of St. Thomas Water Wastewater Pollution Control Plan be submitted as presented. Mover and seconded, please. Frank? Sharon? Just a question. Do we have a conflict of interest on this board or we can vote? Okay. Uh, any further questions? All in favor? Motion carries. And next item is our December planning regulations activity. Nope. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, not a lot of items on that advanced report. There's been a few permits issued, but as we come to the year end, we do our annual statistics. And uh, you know, we've issued, to the date of this meeting, we've issued 49 permits and, and um, 16 site clearances. So for the year, we've issued a total of 65 permissions and they were all issued within the provincial timeline. So the last section of the annual reporting in the advanced report is what we'll submit to MNRF to show that we're meeting the timelines that the province is asking of us to issue permits, but we're just looking for receipt of that uh, activity report. 
Any questions, Pico? CNN said regulation of the Senate planning regulations activity report be received. Move a second. Todd, seconder, please. Brandon. In favor? Motion carries. Next, uh, we have to go into meeting for uh, health resource protection authorities. So we'll just recess we'll from recess. from this meeting. Sure. Motion to recess. I guess we don't need to make no. a recess. Okay, we'll move into source water protection. Oh. Joe, can I get you to do that? Then I will build my memory in terms of, of what needs to be pulled up here. Sorry. And so this presentation and pull up the Kell Creek Source Protection Plan. But we can move ahead with the meeting. Okay. Uh, any disclosure being open? Any vote? Uh, next is uh, minutes from the meetings of uh, August 16th. We have a recommendation that the minutes of August 16th, 2023, the protection authority be uh, approved and be the Lake Erie Regional Management Committee meeting involved separately. I want the uh, source meeting for August 16th first because okay. it's an actual approval. Yeah. Any errors or omissions? So recommendation to approve August sixteenth. Second, please. Ty. Second for you. Jim. All in favor. Motion carries. And B. Uh, we have Lake Erie Regional Management Committee meeting of August fifteenth, and Lake Erie Regional Source Protection Committee meeting minutes of September twenty eighth. So motion to. Receive. Thank Are you any questions on those two? All favor? Three. Next uh, correspondence from Lake Erie Social Protection Committee, the uh, number of notification. Yes, with the retirement of Lloyd Perrin from the municipality of Central Elgin, he was the longstanding rep for our area, our municipal region uh, for the Lake Erie Source Protection Area. Um, so Central Elgin made a, a motion at a recent uh, council meeting to put forward Alex Pickett's. He's the manager of environmental services at Central Elgin to remain as the municipal rep for group seven of the Lake Erie Source Protection Region. Um, that motion was supported by Central Elgin and communication was sent out to all of the municipalities within group seven to support uh, Alex's uh, nomination to represent uh, this area. Um, basically, Central Elgin has had that municipal representation on the Lake Erie Source Protection because they are the uh, location of the two sources of drinking water within our region. So it basically, it makes sense. What I'm asking today is that we receive that correspondence and that the Source Protection Authority show support for that nomination of Alex Pickett to the Lake Erie Source Protection Committee. Questions? Concerns? No. Okay. Hey, we're a and that was all the business for a source. Motion to adjourn socially. Jerry. Sir. Uh, you're just not on the agenda. You're just not on approving anything. So I just said, Terry. Oh, okay. Perfect. 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 Perfect.
motion to go into closed session for property and personal. I saw Sharon move. Yeah. Seconder. John. All favor? Carried. 